Hello and welcome everyone. Hopefully everyone is having a fairly good Monday. I know a lot of people aren't fans of it. Today is Monday, April 30th. And uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Brendan and uh, this is Dev Chatter. So hopefully you are all here to write some code, have some fun, chat about software, programming, pretty much whatever you guys want to talk about related to coding in some form. And uh, we've got a few things planned for today. Uh, I've got some pull requests that I want to review, some that I merged recently, and some that uh, we're probably going to merge pretty quickly here. Um, we have been working on a C-sharp chatbot. It is the one that is in chat uh, right now, so anybody that's here live um, can see it inside that chat window. It'll go ahead and respond and talk to things, so um, I could go ahead and do a command and it will respond back with things. And um, the bot that we're developing uh, does a number of uh, other useful things, including some games that uh, we've programmed it to play. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be continuing that. So we're going to be adding new features and improving it as we go. So hopefully you are here for some awesome C Sharp and .NET Core code, because uh, that's what we're going to be working on. Uh, so the first thing, uh, <laughs> I just saw this comic recently, <coughs> so I thought I would uh, pull it up. So uh, for anybody that is interested, I will toss the link to that in chat. Uh, or uh, anybody that's watching this after the fact can pause and read it. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, it is a comic about how to teach yourself programming in 21 days. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, so, let's go ahead and jump into uh, what we're going to be working on today. So, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, any streams that I've got planned in advance, and also, hey Async Awake, hey Arid Tag, welcome both of you. Uh, we want to go over some pull requests, I mentioned that, and we're going to add new features. But if you want to see what streams are ever coming up, uh, you can make sure you watch the stream info in the Dev Chatter GitHub. And for anyone that wants it, the link to our GitHub is there. It's github.com slash devchatter, and you'll find our stream info project. And it keeps our uh, schedule and streams that are upcoming. So today we're an early stream, so this is actually an hour earlier than we normally start roughly speaking. And um, then I've got, uh, usually if there is a planned stream, I've got a link to this. Um, and uh, then you can find what information we're going to be doing on that stream. So you can check to see, hey, I was thinking about catching the stream today. What are we going to be talking about? So what we've got in here is three things that I want to look at. So I'm going to pull up these pull requests and we are going to review them to start with. So, uh, I do not want to do that one first. I want to talk about this one. So, because it's a merge pull request. So, this one is already in our master branch. So, it's running in the bot that is currently running. Uh, and this one should make it so that our top command uh, no longer includes me in the list, regardless of how much currency I have. So, the idea here is that um, we have a command that lists the top users in chat based on how much currency they've obtained through playing games and uh, participating in the channel. Uh, so it would then list those users. Well the problem is the streamer is always in here so the streamer often has a lot of currency and would always be at the top and that's not very fun because uh, the users want to be able to get to the top of the list and the streamer would pretty much always dominate it. So we have it now excluding the streamer from that list. So this was a pretty small change, so hence why I merged it early. All it did was uh, it checked the list of users and we did a where the role equals the streamer role. So uh, excludes nicely. And obviously if we want to make a change to this later, we could decide that uh, you know we don't include some other user in some other way and it should work just fine. So doesn't impede us from making future changes. So this got merged in and we've seen that. Uh, the next one that got merged in recently is adding a table for the hangman words. So this is an interesting one. So we have a hangman game in our in our bot that we can play and uh, you'll see that I just typed in a command over there to start up a hangman game and I can actually type in the name full if I want also. So I can say hangman e and you know, you'll see that Async Awake is now participating as well in the Hangman game. 
Um, and so we can uh, go ahead and uh, put this in here and I can, you know, go ahead and uh, pull all the letters myself. So you probably saw a whole bunch of stuff happening in chat over there. And that's our hangman game. That's basically how it plays. Uh, anybody in chat can start up, uh, can can participate in the game um, as long as someone else, as long as someone gets it started, and uh, that's how our hangman game works. The interesting thing is now these words are coming out of the database instead of just being hard coded. So before we just had them like just shoved in there because we're like, yeah, we're gonna make this hangman game, it'll be fun, yeah, we'll play it. Uh, but now we want to actually have it be database driven. So this uh, gets rid of our um, where is it? Our word list provider, which is right here and was just a hard-coded list of words uh, inside of a class that someone nicely set up for us. Uh, and instead changes it to be uh, using a, uh, a data model object, a hangman word, that uh, has its associated... Hey, AOD Designs! Uh, welcome, uh, Angel of Death. Uh, I assume that's what AOD stands for there, because um, what else could it stand for? Uh, and so that should make this work. So uh, the couple of things that are important that needed to get changed and did are this. Um, we now have a migration added for hangman words. So there's a hangman words migration that does an up and a down, uh, and it adds a new hangman table that has a single uh, relevant column word and it does get a GUID and and we do this just because all of our tables in here have a primary key with a GUID uh, that we're able to use. Uh, did it not actually? Oh man. Oh. Uh, we're gonna need to look into that. Why didn't uh, why didn't you get tokens? Yeah, AOD design should have gotten tokens. Huh. Might be a bug there, Ed Tag. Thank you for checking that, though. Uh, we'll look into that one. Okay, so down here, uh, the other things that were important that I wanted to make sure got in here. When this system first starts up, what we do uh, is we actually run a migration which adds in the um, adds in the new tables. So any any migrations that you add into our bot are automatically going to run when you start the bot. Uh, we do that just to make it easy for people that are going to run it. Um, it's it's a mildly dangerous approach sometimes, but it, it does uh, does do some nice things there. Um, next thing, uh, what this does is it's checking to make sure that the um, there are words in the database. So if there are no words in the Hangman database, it will go ahead and add them. So that's convenient. There we go. Uh, so, if you didn't have any, it'll put them in there. And the list it's going to put in is this, like, set of food and programming words that we originally created on stream. Worked well enough. So, this is what you get. Alright. Next thing. Um, uh, it added to... So, we needed to get the hangman words added as a DB set on our data context, which it is. And that is what allows our repository now to access it. So now, instead of using the word list provider, we access the list of all hangman words um, from the repository. <laughs> so, and that's what you get. Okay, so this one got merged in. So that's actually what is in our bot right now. So the cool thing that we want to add related to this is now that it's data driven, we can add a command to be able to add additional words to the hangman game. So um, not only that is I could actually add words to the game that you guys don't know exist because it's in my local database and not committed into the repository. So that's one of the advantages we get there. And uh, welcome uh, AOD design if I didn't say it already. Good to have you here. Hopefully you enjoy the stream. So, uh, if we were to take a look at that code, you'll see that it should be in here, uh, which actually, in order to show it to you, I'm gonna hop over here into data and model, and you will see hangman word right here. So this is the code we were just looking at, 
and it is running in our current bot. Okay, so that is that pull request. It also got merged in already. And then the next one that I wanted to talk about is the possible solution to number 33. Now number 33 here is wanting to have a user cooldown on our commands. So essentially making it so that the same user can't run the same command over and over and over again. Um, and so if we take a look at the changes in here, uh, this takes an interesting approach and I do like it. So um, a glad arid tags here while we're reviewing this one. So uh, essentially what changed if we look at this, is um, inside of the uh, base command is where the significant change happened. So in the, uh, oh, it's not per user. Uh, I thought it was per user. Oh, no, 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 it's by command. Right, it's by command. So single command. Yeah, sorry. I said the wrong thing. I misspoke. Sorry, I read tag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yep, yep, yep. It's by command, not by user. Sorry. I, I, yep, that was me. Uh, okay, so here's what we do. Um, so essentially, arid tag put the cooldown logic inside of the base command, which works pretty well uh, for handling this. And essentially then change the way all the other commands work by having them override, and uh, I believe it's probably an abstract, uh, handle command method. And it should be down here, yes, yeah, so a protected abstract handle command. So essentially, all of the implementations of a base command no longer use um, the process method, uh, which was the standard one uh, that an iBot command had. Uh, but what's interesting is that they still have that method because their base class does it. And that's actually what's going to handle the cooldown step. So an alternate way to do this uh, which I'm good with what we've got here, and I am going to merge this one in, but I do want to discuss this for future reference for people, is that a way to handle this without making this, the, the distinction, and we might move to that at some point, is to do what's called the decorator pattern. And the decorator pattern is basically you have um, essentially nested objects, and like one of them is sort of wrapped around, and, and we call it decorating the inner object. And the way that that works is that um, each one is basically calling through to the one below it. So the outside code doesn't really care what it is it's calling, and essentially then what we would end up with is like a cooldown enabled one. Now I would need to think about exactly how we wanted to build that, um, but what that would let us do is essentially wrap a cooldown layer around a command. Uh, and, and the advantage there is that we could then use the same piece uh, for a base command uh, that we do for a simple command, for example, because I believe the simple command, yes. So down here you'll notice the simple command had to do the same basic logical structure, and that's because uh, we're not using a decorator pattern. So um, I will be discussing that because one of the other things that I want to put in now, so I'm going to start using the decorator pattern in a couple of places, and I think we're going to do that today. And um, the couple of places I want to use it are in our repository, because I want to add a caching layer of some kind, um, even if it's just a simple one for now. And the reason I want to do that is that we're now pulling the word list out of the database. And it seems silly to call to the database every time to get that word list when we're, you know, not changing the word list very frequently. So we can keep that in cache in memory. And essentially then just um, invalidate the cache whenever we add a new word. So that's the way that uh, I'm going to set that up. Um, but what I want to make it happen is I don't want anything in the application to have any idea of whether or not we're using caching. So if for some reason there's something ever goes wrong with the caching and I need to turn it off uh, and investigate or I want to change how it works, I won't have to change anything in my code. Now this still achieves, so this achieves that same result, which is why this is a good design and I actually really like it. So um, it was very good. So let's go ahead and uh, pull this one into our bot. So we're not going to do the merge initially. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here into GitHub Desktop, uh, which is the GUI application we use. And I use a GUI on stream because it's more visual and you guys can see it a little bit better if we use this over a command line, although I will revert to the command line a lot. Uh, because that's where I'm usually working. So, 
Uh, what I want to do is I want to hop over to the pull requests. So you'll notice I can just grab pull requests and I can pull in that version. And so it'll switch me onto that branch, connect everything up for me. It's actually really nice. So now if I go over here, we are running on, the, we now have that version. Now it hasn't restarted the bot or anything, so the bot's still running the other one, but uh, we should now have this code. So if I do, I'm gonna start off by pulling out one of the commands. So we'll take a look, for example, at the coins command, which is implementing base command and is overriding handle command. So it should be working as we expect. Uh, ooh, Yuri Said, I'm gonna guess. Uh, welcome, thanks for following, and uh, if I messed up your name, let me know, and I will try to do better next time. Um, oh, always difficult, but uh, I, will, I will do what I can. I also have a complicated name that I go by. I usually go by the name Brandonius on the internet, so I totally understand when uh, when someone messes up a name. No one can get mine right. For Well, some people get it right the first time. Actually, that's funny. AOD Designs, who's in here... Uh, she got it right the first time, actually. She was one of the one of the only ones that that you know just blurted it out, and I was like, "Wow, she got it! That was impressive." Probably why I remember that she got it. So here's what we're gonna do. I want to stop the bot. We're gonna go ahead and get it started again, uh, but this time we're gonna be running the code that Arid Tag sent us. It was Arid Tag, right? That did this one. Arid Tag, you're the one that did this, right? Yes, Arid Tag did this one. Crash. Uh, why did it crash? Alright, I'm guessing it's the 500 error from... So there's an undocumented Twitch API that sometimes throws a 500 error, and one of these days I'm going to wrap that in a try-catch block so we stop throwing this exception. Uh, or someone else can toss a try-catch block around that as a pull request and send it to me and I'll use it. Yep, that's all it was. Okay. So... Uh, first things first, I am going to try a couple of commands. So these are simple commands. So I'm going to try the pet command, and then I'm immediately going to try the pet command again. So there does not seem to be a cooldown on that. That or I override it. Actually, Arid Tag, you try it. You don't override these. I'm a mod. I override these. Try doing the pet command a few times. I just want to see what happens... Uh... Because I forget, I don't think we, I didn't think you put anything on simple commands that would give them any kind of time-based thing. Yeah, okay. So these ones, I believe, have good timing. Uh, where is cooldown? Right here. Cooldown, time span zero. Okay, so there's no cooldown on simple commands, so that works nicely. So that's what we're expecting. And then if we try a non-simple command, like say the coins command. So let's try the coins command. Uh, people want to hit the coins command a little bit. Let's go ahead and see what that one does. So arid tag can use the coins command. And, and for anybody that's wondering why arid tag is typing ASD between those, um, Twitch doesn't like it if you send the same message multiple times in a row, and so that's why Arid Tag is sending in a, a different thing before typing the same command again, because Twitch would otherwise yell at him. Okay, so that seems to run without error, but it is not blocking it. So the question then is, should it be? Let's take a look at the code. So we're going to hop into the base command. Arid tag is neither... <coughs> Sorry. Didn't get to my mute button in time to block the sneeze. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, so checking the user can bypass uh, cooldown. There's nothing... Oh, is our cooldown set? Time span zero on these. Hangman's the only one with a cooldown right now. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to add one to this. Uh, base command, what is this? Cooldown, time span, protected. Okay, so we can set the cooldown inside of our constructor. Is the way that it works. So, cooldown equals 
uh, time span uh, from seconds. Uh, let's say that you can only call the coins command every 10 seconds. Okay. That'll limit the cooldown. That'll limit that one just a little bit, just so it doesn't get spammed. Actually, I might shorten it even. Uh, I might make it even shorter. We'll make it every five seconds. So when you guys test this, you'll have five seconds to type it in again. Oh, very nice! You connected to you connected to the multiple channels. That's that's pretty fun. We've been thinking about doing that one. Um. <laughs> Alright, so arid tag ran the coins command. And the coins command. And boom. So arid tag called the coins command and didn't get it and should have got okay, and you got your PM. Okay, so what arid tag just mentioned, if you've been reading the chat over there on the right hand side of the screen, uh, you will see that uh, arid tag mentioned getting a private message from the bot. So it noticed that uh, the cooldown was in effect and didn't want to let uh, that second coins command go through. So that stepped in and did that. Okay, so that lets us uh, set for each one of these commands how long we actually want the cooldown to be. Uh, we're probably going to want that eventually to be data driven, but at least gives us some control now, which is great. Uh, so that seems to be working. And there was nothing crazy when we were looking around at this code. All of it seemed to be like the kind of thing that we wanted to have in here. And if we expand this out, we'll see this code a little bit better. You'll see that it does like a check to see uh, whether or not you can bypass the command. The other thing it adds, it adds a concept of a game. So it wants to see if a game is running. And so it disables the cooldown for a game when it's running is basically what it does. So. That makes it so that if we're in the middle of a game, you're not getting caught with a cooldown caused by the general command uh, step. So like the Hangman game, for example. Uh, what did you set the Hangman game uh, cooldown to in here? Time span, minutes, 15. So you limit it to Hangman game can only be played once every 15 minutes. Uh, I'm actually going to tweak that to 10 minutes because 15 minutes seems long. Uh, so. What we're going to do is we are going to jump into the hangman game, go to the hangman command, and we're going to change that to 10 minutes. So you can play hangman once every 10 minutes. Hey, Pritchett bots! Thank you for the subscription, much appreciated! Woo! And if anybody didn't notice, that is Steve Ballmer and Bill Gates dancing in that little animation we got there. So, quite fun. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. Uh, Arid Tag, you have to take your card for service. Hopefully you don't run into any issues with this while you're gone. And hope we don't miss the rest of the stream. Yeah, I hope you don't miss the stream. I'm actually not going to be running that late. That's why we started early. Um, so, uh, good luck with your car. Hopefully that goes well. I actually have to take mine in at some point soon also. And uh, welcome back, Crimson Green. And have a good lurk, Arid Tag. Uh... Uh, I don't even know how this works, but it looks like it will help you making good game. Pritchett bots, that is correct. Um, so it also does a couple of other things. So subscribing to the channel gets you access to our dev to hype emote. So you can get a little T-Rex that's holding his little, he's got his little grabbers because he's got short arms and he can hold up his hype signs. So we love that little guy. Uh, so yes, no, 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 pet, pet's the command crimson. Uh, can I alias that? Add pet rar. No. Because it's not a real command. We can't alias our fake commands. So, uh, I was hoping. Yeah, so everybody can, can have the bot throw up the hype you know, emote, but uh, if you want to actually use it yourself, you got to be a subscriber. So... Yeah, bummer. Okay, anyway, so let's go ahead and make this work. Uh, 
Oh, and also, for anybody else that's in here, uh, we do actually have a number of people that chat regularly in our Discord, so all the people that are contributing uh, and are sending in pull requests and things like that uh, often chat in our, uh, in our Discord, so it's pretty common. Uh... <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, Nightbot doesn't like you posting links in here, um, which, of course, is, you know, because that's what a moderator bot does. Um, uh, in case you wanted to see the new uh, GUI stuff you made, uh, I will take a look at it sometime. Um, that, that link will be in chat, so I'll be able to see it later. Okay, uh, so that added the game, and we have game, and we have game command. And so that is how those works, and uh, that will let you know whether or not the game is running. So the associated game for the game command is how that works. All right. Let's go ahead and merge this in. We're going to bring this in, and uh, that will be good. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think I already approved it, didn't I? Yep, I did. All right, let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. Boom. It's in. All right, let's go back here to the master branch. Wow. Yeah, thanks, thing. Git shell. So I'm going to pop up the git shell here. And the reason I'm going to do that is I am going to uh, hop over into our folder. And we are going to git stash. And then we're going to check out master, git pull. And then we're going to git stash pop. And one of the things I like about being on the command line is I can type in commands faster than git can do stuff. So, <laughs> so it's already got the next operation queued up before uh, before it goes. <clears throat> All right, Janisku, welcome, and uh, everybody everybody else. If I if I didn't if I didn't welcome you, I apologize for not explicitly welcoming everyone that's here. But welcome. I hope you are all having a good Monday. I know it's not everybody's favorite day, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to have fun by writing some code anyway. Uh, so, what I wanted to do was make a quick change here, so I am going to ah, get back out, dash B, uh, Manric, uh, change, cooldown. So we are going to go ahead and get that going, and then I am going to hop over here, and since we're inside of a branch, I am going to say uh, make hangman cooldown shorter. Uh, I don't like committing anything directly to the master branch, so I am going to send this up as a pull request. And once we've got that up there, I'm going to go ahead and say new pull request and change cooldown. Create the pull request. That's a great name. Make hangman cooldown shorter. And then that will be in there. Uh, May Day is tomorrow. Yes, it is. That will be May 1st tomorrow. Uh, and that is very fun. Uh, and by fun, I mean it's not exactly fun, but, you know, holidays. Holidays are often fun, regardless of what the holiday is actually about. Um, for example, a lot of people around the world celebrate May 4th as, like, May the 4th be with you, you know, as their, like, joke of, you know, Star Wars Day. Uh, so, uh, that's this Friday. And, um... Uh, but I'm actually from an area where uh, May 4th has another event uh, that's known about it. Uh, May 4th, 1970 is the one that uh, we know about in these parts, which, uh, not a, not a very fun event. Uh, it was, so what, that's, uh, we're getting close to, like, 50 years, uh, since that event, but, uh, World Wake, do you know what event I'm talking about? World Wake, do you, do you know what May 4th, 1970 is referring to? Is that why you're saying that? All right, so, oh, May the 4th. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. May 4th, 1970 is a different one. Uh, it is uh, way less fun. Yes. Yes, Twitch Loft. See, that, that's a good one. That's a holiday. It's a day off. Um, but a lot of times when you have those, like, you know, we have, like, Labor Day and things like that, um... 
those are usually because uh, workers had a really bad time in the past, and so now you get some day. Uh, no, 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 World Wake, it is not a good one. <laughs> uh, it's a 19... What, what the? 1970. I apparently can't type. Uh, that would be this one. Uh, May 4th, 1970. Uh, the National Guard uh, actually opened fire on U.S. citizens. So that was a bunch of years ago. Not a, not a fun holiday, that one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and merge in this pull request. And uh, now our hangman command should be a little bit shorter. And so I am going to restart the bot to do that one. Whoops, that's not the bot. This is the bot. So, yeah, when I said that was a less fun one, it's a less fun one. Um, but that is a uh, very well-known event in the area that I am from. It's not common for... Uh, one of those things is like, yeah, there's a lot of shootings. It's weird when it's your own military shooting your own people. So, people tend to remember those ones. At least uh, within a lot of, in a lot of Western countries, because it doesn't happen too frequently. It happens more than most people like, though. Okay. Yeah, see, Pritchett Bots? Not a, not a fun event. But either way, we're writing code. That's way more fun. So, uh, let's go ahead and test out the Hangman. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start up a hangman game, and I'm going to toss a letter out there. E's not in the word, guys, so go ahead and solve that hangman game, and then what we're going to do is, since we just ran this, uh, we're going to ask someone that is not me to attempt to start another hangman game after this, and they should get the cooldown alert about it. So, there you go. All right, so hopefully you guys do well on that. Let's go ahead and jump into our uh, changes we're gonna do to these commands. So, uh, I talked about wanting to uh, add in the decorator pattern on a repository. Now, we actually used to have this in the previous version. Um, so, what I am gonna do is this. So, we're going to change up how our repository works. So we have a repository, we have specifications, we have a number of little items in here. What I want to do to start is get us a... Oh, you didn't hit the cooldown. Okay, well, we'll try it again in a... Uh, no, Async Awake, you don't qualify for the cooldown. You override it. Yeah. And, uh, welcome, uh, I'll say Sharon, uh, Sharon Gan DNT, welcome, welcome to Dev Chatter, and, and see, <laughs> I love how Janisku is doing the same thing I did, putting in the letters in an order once we, once we have the word there. Okay, um, so what I want to do is this, so we have our I repository. now what we don't have is a cached repository yet, so, um, I want to add that in. So I think that it makes sense to me that caching might be under data. So data caching inside of our core project. That seems relatively logical to me. I might look for it here. And then inside of this, I am going to make a cached repository. Now the repository that we have at this point is actually uh, over here in our entity framework project you'll see we have an EF generic repository and it's very simple and just gets us access to uh, the basics of what we need. What I am going to do is this. I am going to make this one also implement repository and then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to make it so that this one actually just wraps the other one. So, we're going to make a constructor for it, and we're going to have this one take in an iRepository, repository, and the repository that it's going to use is going to get stored. So we're going to say private iRepository, and we're going to call this one, I'm going to call it internal, 
uh, underscore internal repository. Uh, what? Well, internal repo. We're going to go with internal repo. And the reason I want to do that, I give it that specific name, is because I want to make sure that it's really clear that this is the internal one, not the repository itself. So the reason, so this gets us a little bit of nesting here. And now, this is implemented using the decorator pattern, and I will show you what we're going to do here. So these all throw not implemented exceptions but the first thing I can do with each and every one of these is I can just say return this dot create T and I can pass in my data item and I can essentially make each one of these just be a pass through to the internal and what that means is that I can get away with not actually implementing everything right off the bat so that saves me a lot of work I don't actually have to do each one of these. Uh, we're going to pass in the data item list and we can decide which ones get cached. So that lets me out the gate, save myself a lot of work and our code still runs as we would expect it to. So I am going to go ahead and call list of T and pass in my spec. Uh, just it's almost as if you kind of yes 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 um, and actually you notice it's graying out these T's I don't really need them here uh, I can just call that because it can figure out based on the context of that type what is actually getting called there so I don't really need to pass those that's why it's graying those out uh, but what I want to do here is I want to finish up sending each one of these. We're going to send in the spec again. And then down here we're going to do the same thing. Now, a couple of these we're going to need to do it a little bit differently. So what we need to do when we set this up is we want to make it so that the uh, ones that do updates and adds, uh, they need to delete a cache entry. And the ones that... Um, access it are going to need to um, the ones that access it are going to need to cache uh, at a certain point. Whoops, that doesn't have a return. That's a void one. Okay, so now my cached repository exists and does nothing, which is perfect. That is exactly what we want it to do. Sounds hilarious, doesn't it? This does nothing, which means that we can now use it without any problems. It's not currently getting used. We don't want it to get used yet uh, because obviously it's not done. It's not in place, but uh, that's how we want it to work. So uh, let me go ahead and um, we we used to have this in here somewhere. Uh, do, do, do. There we go. Okay, uh, so we have our internal repo and then we need to add a cache layer. So inside of caching I am going to add a new item and that is going to be an interface and I'm going to call it an iCache layer. And what I am going to do, you guys are going to laugh about this, is I am going to pull this up. And uh, let's see who is running on Linux. Uh, uh, so we are, um, you're in a container right now and you tried .NET run inside the unit test project, didn't die, but nothing happens either. Uh, inside the test project, uh, Pritchett bots, do a .NET test instead of a .NET run. Uh, there's actually no reason this project shouldn't run in Linux, so you should be able to run this in a Docker container, because we're all command line, we didn't do anything weird. Uh, so everything .NET Core should be able to run there, so yeah, if you want to give it a try, go for it. Um, I might recommend keeping it separate for now, just because I'm not running Docker on this computer right now. Um, I've actually got it installed but disabled, um, because uh, some of the 
uh, virtualization that Docker likes to use interferes with some of my other virtualization that I use. So I actually have it turned off right now, so I'm probably not going to add it to this project at the moment. But it is there. Uh, anyway, so what I was going to show you guys is uh, I wanted to pull this up because we already wrote some of this code. Uh, we actually used to have a caching layer in this project, and I removed it temporarily. And it is time to bring it back. So, uh, what it, oh, those used to, uh, whoops. Beta entity. Uh, we're going to add a reference to that. So there we go. Um, yeah, uh, actually, um, Docker runs pretty well on Windows. Uh, there are a number of developers that, that do run it in here, and um, it, it runs fine. So... Okay, so here's what I put in my caching layer. So I just pasted this in from our old code that used to be in this project. And essentially the idea is uh, we have a try get, which says go ahead and try to get this item. If you get it, awesome, you know, and use this cache key to get it. We then have an insert that will uh, insert the data into the cache. Uh, and that's very simple caching layer. We could make a more complicated one, but there's not really much need right now. So we're going to add that. So that means that we now need to put this on our cached repository. So what's cool about this is our cached repository, you'll notice it's just a pass through. This add to layer, it knows nothing about the data access, and it also is not really going to know anything about our caching, which is very cool when you think about that. So I'm going to come in here, we're going to say cache layer, and then we can say underscore cache layer equals cache layer. And essentially now we've wired up um, a caching project that doesn't really do much, and that's fine. Uh, we are working on a C Sharp chatbot uh, that runs in Twitch, so it is actually this chatbot. Uh, so it's that guy right there that's talking to you in chat. And uh, it's all written in C-sharp using .NET Core. Uh, but right now what we're working on is we are implementing the decorator pattern to give us a caching layer for our data access. So we're going to add a cached repository that wraps around our Entity Framework uh, SQL access. And if anybody has any questions, if I'm doing anything weird with this, shout it out because this is... Uh, I don't want to say it's complicated because it's not complicated. This is actually a simple approach and that's why we like it because everything about it is easy to look at. So you can look at any one of these and be like, oh yes, I get how that works. Um, uh, data item helps if you get all those wired up, Brendan. Okay, so we need a cache layer. So... Uh, I could just make my simple in-memory cache that I had before, uh, but I don't think I want to do that one. Either way, here's what we're going to add. We're going to take the simple approach at first. We're going to make this uh, more advanced later, but we're going to start with the simple approach. So I am going to gank this and toss this over on our cache repository. So we're going to put this in place of our create. I think that, uh, is that the one I pulled? Wait, which one did I pull? Single. I did single. So we're going to come down here to single. Now I'm going to do something a little bit magical, everybody. Uh, oh, I'm not. I don't get to. I don't get to. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pull this all to the left, and then I want to get rid of those. So we're going to go ahead and multi-line select and delete all those, and then I'm going to hit a keyboard shortcut to make that actually work. So I am going to call internal repo single and we're going to return items. So what we're going to do for our start is we're going to say grab the item out of the cache. If we don't find it, we're going to pull it from our internal repository and then insert that into our cache using the cache key that we got from our spec. So luckily our spec already has a cache key on it. We just need to define how those work. Uh, oh, uh, so actually I do have uh, some advice, but um, uh, so 
if you are wondering where to start, you need to choose what language, what stuff you want to build, what you want to be doing with it. Um, I like C Sharp as a pretty good language, it's a nice starting point, uh, but there's a lot of debate whether you should start with a low level language or a high level language. I would argue you want to start with something high to begin with, but then sometime early in your career you want to learn a low level language. So that means learn something that's easy to program with like a C Sharp, a Ruby, a Python, something like that. But then in the long, like, as you learn more, you're going to want to go pick up uh, C++ or C or something like that so you can learn more about what's going on underneath the surface. Uh, I think there's some value in that. But uh, like Async Awake says, it really depends on what you're planning on programming. So if you want to do games or apps or websites, uh, let us know and we can, uh, we can make some suggestions and recommendations. There's a lot of good information within the Dev Chatter community. So a lot of awesome, helpful people here. Yep, see, Pritchett recommends Python, so Python's a good one. I know that language, it's it's quite fun, easy to work with, and it gives you some structure that uh, is actually very helpful for new programmers. Okay, so, uh, I just explained how uh, our single code works here. Uh, I want to do basically the same thing, but I want to do it for list. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take this. I am going to uh, change that to be list instead of spec. And this is going to be a list of T instead of just a T. And then everything should work, uh, I think. Uh, try to get a list of T matching that spec key. Uh, and owned SB, welcome, thanks for following. Sorry about the delay in responding to you there. Uh, do, 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 do. Cash layer, try get. Uh... Oh, because we said it has to be. Got it. I said it has to be one of these, and I don't actually want that restriction. Okay. Restriction removed. I think everything will still build, but we'll find out in a second. Uh, let me see what is in here. I will probably make a website, but we'll work alone. So uh, I would like to know both front and back end. Okay, so um, what you're going to want to learn then is you're going to want to learn JavaScript because you're going to need that for the front end. And uh, as OX539 mentioned, um, you could learn JavaScript and just do node development, uh, but JavaScript is going to need to be one of the languages you learn. You're going to need to learn the markup language uh, HTML, uh, at least basically, and uh, CSS. Uh, for backend, I like C Sharp, but a number of people like other ones, and there are no wrong answers there. So, oh, uh, WorldWake. Um, if you change the connection string, uh, so uh, if you are trying to run this and you can't do local DB, I believe you just need to change the connection string. So uh, change this to point to a different type of database that you'll need to set up and then you'll be able to do it. So uh, if you if you can't support local DB, that's that's what you're going to need to do is just get a new connection string, uh, WorldWake, and uh, you can look online and if you can't find one, ask us and one of us can help you get a connection string that'll work and then you'll be able to get that in there. Um, and uh, there are a lot of courses uh, for intro development stuff too if you want to hop into that. Okay, so. So here's what we've got. Um, we currently have, uh, we can pull a list, uh, we can get a list with single, and either one of those, whether we get a list of them or a single item, is now using a cache, uh, it's using a cache that doesn't really exist. It wants a cache layer, we don't have one. So inside this cache repository, that's how that works. Um, we want create to be able to nuke items, and we want uh, data item list to be able to um, fix things as well. So 
Um, we're going to need to uh, check stuff. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, let's see, I clicked build and then run into a page. Also show for the right IDE or editor. Uh, so a lot for a lot of that, it's going to depend on what you want. Um, Barletcha, um, so here, uh, stack over, oh, hey, stack overflow survey. Yes, exactly. That's what we wanted. So the 2018 stack overflow survey. Uh, if we take a look at development environments and tools, these are the currently used most popular development environments. So if you're looking for one, uh, Visual Studio Code is a nice one. It's a free one from Microsoft. It's act surprisingly used by a lot of people that do JavaScript development, which is not Microsoft specific tech, um, but it also lets you do the Microsoft stack. So this ID will actually let you do everything we do here on Dev Chatter. Um, the one that you see in the background that I'm running is Visual Studio. That's this one. Um, I think this is popular just because people hack on it. I wouldn't recommend Notepad++ as your actual IDE. Um, a lot of people run Sublime Text. Root Guy apparently loves Emacs. Of course he does, uh, being Root Guy. I also would have accepted Vim from Root Guy, either one. Uh, and then a lot of people like the IntelliJ stuff. So if you wanted to run Java, uh, IntelliJ is great. Um, Android Studio is very similar to that. I believe they're based on each other. And uh, yeah, so um, my recommendation would be if you want to get started with things, I would check out VS Code. It's pretty nice. Um, it's free. Uh, unless you're really averse to Microsoft, at which point then I would recommend uh, probably running Sublime Text. It's another one that's pretty easy. So. Uh, Dano Sutto, uh, welcome. Thanks for following. Hopefully you enjoy Dev Chatter. And uh, yes, uh, e Emacs, Vim, all the IDs are awesome. Uh, don't let anybody tell you which ones. Uh, Barletcha, VS Code is a lighter weight one, and Visual Studio is generally just used for full Microsoft like tech development, so that's why I'm running it here, because we are doing C Sharp, so it works very well for this, has a lot of extra stuff. Uh, but if you're not planning on going the C Sharp route, uh, then I would recommend VS Code instead. Uh, it's the lighter weight one. Uh, both of them have free editions, uh, but uh, VS Code is completely free, whereas Visual Studio has like more expensive, you know, you can pay for ones that you probably won't pay for if you're just learning C Sharp. So, yep, that is what you got there. Uh, but VS Code is a very popular one. Uh, the Node devs, uh, so Node JS developers, so j like the hardcore JavaScript developers that use it for their front end and back end of their websites, uh, the ones I know mostly have switched to VS Code. A lot of people have. Um, it's got good plugin support, and uh, it is actually built on the same open source tech as some other IDEs. So uh, it's very good. Um, you probably saw Adam in the list. A T O M Adam. Um, that I believe is the same code base uh, that VS Code is implementing. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but fairly certain. Okay, so um, here's what I want to do. Um, I want to see, so in my cache layer, I want to actually store the spec that was used, um, if I can. Um, along with the cache key, I think, in the long run, because I want to be able to nuke a cache item. I want to be able to expire something from the cache. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and I'm going to close some of those extra pieces down. I am going to just grab my memory cache layer that we had before. We're going to actually... So once we add our website, we're going to switch this caching layer for the ASP.NET caching layer that's built in. It'll be nice. Um, yeah, Pritchard Buzz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vim, Vim, Vim is not the one you want to recommend for someone that's just learning programming. I wouldn't recommend Emacs to that person either. Although if you've been programming for a long time, Vim and Emacs can be very good. They're both very powerful and quite nice. Uh, so, here is what I am going to do. I am going to go ahead and view this because I'm going to steal this whole file. 
Uh, we're going to view the raw file, and I am going to just take this, and I am going to pull the to-do also, because to-do create a better cash layer implementation is really true. We should. Oh, man. All right, so I'm going to take this. I am going to toss this into its own file. And now it needs references to generic collection. And um, we no longer need these type constraints on here because I didn't have them in my cache layer. I do need to have the class constraint though because I'm doing a, a safe cast there and so it's going to require it, but that's fine. So now I want to go to this, and I need to put the same where restriction on this one. So we want to just say where it's a class because of the cast that I put in there, so it's requiring it. Uh, Sudoku, Nano, yeah, 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 Nano's great. Um, yes. Uh, we don't want to do any of these things. Don't don't listen to these people. They're they're giving you horrible suggestions, Barletcha. Um, Microsoft Paint, the ultimate IDE. Uh, I use tabs for the first. <laughs> Thanks, root guy. That's great. You are very very evil. Uh, oh man, Sudoku. We're not using typewriters here. We don't we don't need that crap. Don't give me that. Okay, uh, can I implicitly convert that to that? What? Oh, I made it a data entity, that's why. So we're going to make these objects, because I don't actually care what that type is in there. I just want to make it an object. Okay. Uh... Mario Paint. Mario Paint Composer, everyone. That's how you that's how you write code. Alright, so now we have this is like the simplest form of a cache. So if anybody's ever used caching, we're gonna replace this with like a real ASP.NET built-in caching layer once we switch to ASP.NET. But the nice thing about this is that because we're using this caching layer inside of an interface, we don't actually need to worry about this. So uh, it makes things nice and easy. And this can just get replaced. This piece is replaced and nothing else even knows about it. In fact, our cache, our cached repository won't even know that we've changed our caching layer. So it lets us get away with a couple of things that we want to be able to do. So, uh, first I'm going to do this. So we're going to say caching. That's our caching branch that we're creating there. And actually I'm going to click the publish button so it is out on the server as well. Uh, gonna stop the bot and get it running again. Oh, uh, yeah, that is actually a nice trick. You could just do a search on two spaces, replace it with one. Uh, I am a I'm a single space kind of guy because you know I I never never had the reason to do two spaces after a sentence because I don't use a typewriter. Okay, so things seem to compile and run, so that's good. Um, we added in this cache repository. It's not being used and an in-memory cache, so this stuff doesn't break anything. Uh, adding basic caching files. I'm going to do a commit for this, and we're going to continue on. But it's always good to make sure you get commits in there. Uh, OX539XD, welcome, thanks for following. Uh, apparently you're at least having fun since you clicked that button. Uh, okay, so, oh yes, I feel your pain, Sudoku. I never used a typewriter, I have always been a computer kid. But Sudoku, aren't you like 50 something, like 53 years old or something? You didn't use a typewriter back in the day? Yeah, that was that was me hiding from Sudoku there. She was gonna kill me. 
Uh, okay, so... Uh, which Git GUI was that? Oh, um, Meister. Uh, this is... So, uh, for the stream, I use uh, GitHub Desktop because uh, I wanted to have a visual one. Uh, so this one is GitHub Desktop, and I like it because uh, it gets me quick access to all of the uh, repositories that we use on stream, and it's fairly simple, so not a lot of complicated stuff, and it's nice and easy to show people. Also does some nice things like let me not have to um, type a bunch of git commands that I'm going to mess up while I'm on stream, uh, even though I'm normally always in the command line. Uh, lets me do things like set my upstream and stuff like that. Uh, but then it has one added thing that I'm really big fan of. It has this little tab here for pull requests. So if there's an outstanding pull request, I can click on this and it will actually pull the pull request in as a local branch for me. So connecting to that other, uh, connecting out off of the normal uh, set of branches. So it's very nice for that. So I actually like this a lot specifically for this project. So it, it's treated me well. Uh, and uh, if you are looking for it, I believe it's at, like, desktop.github.com. Yep, it's right here. So, GitHub Desktop. So, if anyone is interested in uh, getting that, uh, that's where it is. And um, all of our stuff is also out on GitHub. If anyone does want to check it out, it's at github.com slash devchatter. So, all the code that we do on stream is out there. Uh, so you can go check out any of it at any time. Okay, so uh, back to this. We have our cached repository set up. It's pretty simple. Um, and there's not much in this right now. Uh, what we want to do is we want to actually make our cache keys work. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to write some unit tests around our cache keys because these things are going to get weird. Um, there's something I want to do with our cache keys that is going to be pretty amazing. And I will show you that in a little bit. So, uh, where to start? So, our I specification, you'll notice that it has a getter for a cache key. So, these could be set up in a lot of ways. Um, but the simple one is like this. We have an all, right? So um, I'm going to take a second and I'm going to explain how our uh, our specifications work because it's a little, uh, it's very, very, very powerful. These specifications let us do some really awesome stuff, but they're a little complicated. So I want to talk to you about them. Um, it's not super complex. Once you understand it, it's actually pretty simple, but there is there's a there's a, a piece that has to click first uh, before it makes sense. So I will talk about this for one second, and then we're going to take a look at how it actually works. So our I specification is basically how we get our filter criteria to our repository. So it is an expression of function of T of bool. Now that sounds really complicated. It's not. Essentially, all this means is I want to take in a function that when given an object will return back a true or false state. So that basically says um, it's my way of deciding should I include this object in the collection or not. So, for example, if I want to pass in a specification to get a certain user, I might want to check their username. And so I want to find a user by username, so I'm going to use a chat user policy, which is our one of our specifications, and you'll see we have it by display name. So essentially the function that I pass in is this. I say where the display name equals display name. And so that lets me have a short little static method by display name on my chat user policy. So if I look at where this is used, you'll see that um, the coins command, for example, looks, does, you know, it does a repository single and says chat user policy by display name user to check and so essentially what that lets us do is that lets us in a reusable way be able to pull a user by name what's cool about that is because of the fact that we are 
um, extracting by name like that is that lets us do one extra step. These specifications, these policies, don't have to work just on our repository. We can use them with an in-memory collection as well. We can use, so we can get away with using these wherever we want. Uh, so let me actually look and see if I did that anywhere in our code. Okay, we didn't. So I haven't used it yet, but we will. And I will show you how we're going to do that. So, um, let's see. For certain items, like our, um, like our word list, for example, um, we might want to uh, have a, a policy about words. So let's jump to the code where we access where we accessed our word list. Now, if anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about, I'm talking about our Hangman game. So I'll start up a Hangman game in chat so you guys can see that. Feel free to play it while we talk about it. Uh, but you can play this game of Hangman in chat. It's right over here in our Hangman command. And what our Hangman uh, command does is it starts up a Hangman game. And the Hangman game has... Uh, do, 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 where is it? Uh, where's the word list? List. Guest letters. Nope. Uh, hangman word. Here it is. Okay, so it chooses a password based on this list. And what I'd like to have it do, uh, you gotta, you gotta actually do the command, uh, OXD. Yeah, like that. Yep, that's how you do it. You got it. Okay, so what I would like to have it do is um, words it's already pulled, I would like to have those not included in the list, so only choose ones that it hasn't run today. So uh, that would be the idea. Essentially, uh, you know, maintain a previous word list or something like that, pass those in and skip them, and that I think would be a cool way of handling things. Now what's neat about that is I could have the specification uh, apply to this list that's coming out so we can grab the full list but then exclude those ones and do it based on a specification if we want. Essentially then always putting filtering down to a specification which is a very very powerful trick uh, because it gives us that reuse and that policy that we can have wherever we want. Okay so let's go ahead and jump back into that. So our caching layer, you'll notice, is a pretty simple one. We're just shoving objects into our dictionary based on a cache key. And we want to take a look at our policies. So I think it would be a good idea to say cache our... Uh, I don't want to start with chat user because that one's a complicated one because they get changed. Let's cache our hangman word uh, policy. We did an all policy on that one. Uh, so we're gonna make a new. Do we want to do a new one? No, we want to do. Hangman be a good one. What other policies do we have? I'm gonna take a look at our other policies. We're gonna select one that'll work nicely. Uh, command policy. That'd be a good one. Uh, we could definitely do command policy. Or a command word policy, which is. An set of aliases. We'll do the command policy, because I think this is a good one. Uh, now we're going to do command word entity. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, yes, Janiscu. Yeah, the idea is going to be we're going to make it so we're going to avoid a word that's already been guessed today. So we're going to exclude that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to hop over into a unit test project. We're going to open up core. We're going to open up... Uh, interestingly, we don't have the data folder yet, which makes sense because uh, everything else in there up until now was just a model object, and there's no... Right now, our model objects are basically just um, a model of what's going into the database, and so there's not really anything to test there. It's just properties. Uh, but what I want to check now is specifications... And then inside of specifications, I am going to make a folder that I am going to call command word, oops, command word policy tests. And then I am going to make a new class in here. We're going to call this um, 
Uh, something should. I don't know its name yet, so that's why I'm just calling it something should, is because I don't have a name yet. Once I have a name, then we'll be good. Um, so we're gonna say uh, we're gonna say fact public void. Whoops. Let's get that reference. Public void test one. No, these are not the permanent names of everything. I just don't know what I'm testing yet. I like to write the code, and then that lets sort of jogs my brain for what I'm going to build. So uh, if you're ever sh not sure what to write, um, I, I don't like hitting, you know, developer writer's block, we'll call it, you know, development block. So the way that I avoid that is by just starting to write some code, and uh, it, it helps me out to do that. So um, I want to do a command word policy. And then once I've got the command word policy, I want to say uh, by word. And then the word we're going to pass in is um, foo. And then we want to var policy equals this. So we're going to store the policy. Policy dot cash key should what should I'm pretty sure I have this library yes I do I included it so should be uh, and now I don't know what that cash key should be yet we're gonna figure that out but I think that's the way we're gonna do it uh, let's see what do we got going on in chat. Uh, how many cool side projects doing a bit of stuff that you showcase or blogs or uh, Yes, if you do, Root Guy, that would be very awesome. Um, there is one Twitch Loft, and I can't remember what it is. Uh, if you remember, let me know. Um, no? Uh, T. It's T. That's what it is. Uh, thank you, Twitchloff. You you got me to check. So it's just T. <laughs> okay. Um, Worldwick, uh, Dev Cheddar. How does the authentication to your database work? I don't see any password using the local database connection string. Uh, so Worldwick, um, it is actually because the local DB allows my local user account to make a connection to the SQL Server. So that's actually the way uh, that this one works. Uh, so if you are running uh, a, a full SQL server or some other database where you can make that full connection without um, essentially doing um, a trusted connection, you can do that. Uh, but you don't need to because you could put the authentication, uh, whatever it is, whether it's a username and password or whatever you need, inside this connection string. So I'm doing a trusted connection and that's why I don't have to put a username and password in, but you can go grab a different type of connection string and it should be able to work that way also. Uh, does that make sense, World Week? Hopefully. Okay, so here's what I am thinking for this one. Uh, I'm thinking that a good cache key would be this. Um, I think it would be nice if our cache key did, if it were something like this for that one. I think that would be a good cache key reasonably like not perfect but i think this would get us far enough essentially taking those parts and making that work uh yeah world wake uh you should just be able to use a standard connection string uh for that anyone you can just find one online for how to connect to whatever database you've got um and then that should be able to work um What uh, what kind of da are you you're running Windows Worldwake? What what kind of system are you on? And and do you have a SQL Server of some kind installed? Uh, I think it sounded like you were running in Writer. Um, okay, so in theory, that's what we want to have happen. I'm going to go ahead and run this test by clicking these buttons, and we're going to see what's going to happen. And yes, I know this is called sh something should and test one, but <laughs> I just want to see what we actually get out of this first. Okay. Uh, so we expected that, and what we got... Ooh! 
That's way more interesting. That's cool. So I was already actually wiring this up to be kind of neat. Um, yeah. Weird. That's nice. Uh, okay, so here's the challenge. What we ended up getting here, uh, if you look at this, uh, let's jump back to our test, which should be this one. So I already set these up to be fairly complicated, which is very cool. Um, I don't know if any, if you guys can see this. That text is really small there. Um, but basically what I did was... Um, I can't believe, I forgot I did that. That is so hilarious. Um, let me let me show you guys this code. So, in the standard data item policy, I set up our cache key to be based on the type, and then I took the criteria and I actually just put it on there, um, which is not ideal. Um, how to get a C sharp lambda expression uh, tree as a string. Uh, retrieving how many? Uh, no, no, um, uh, C sharp expression tree is how to convert string to its equivalent. Uh, using expression tree to read the name and value of a property. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Queries, expression tree, string assignment, and how to create expression tree to convert expression tree to source code. Um, walk C sharp expression tree. How to create an expression tree. Um, do, 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 do. do you have it? Someone has to have it for me. Come on, guys. Did someone not just write this for me? I am not the first person to want to do this, and I don't remember how to do this code. Um, walk expression tree for caching. C sharp. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, let's see, expression tree, two string, some kind of sound, 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 static. no, 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 no. Uh, so if anybody doesn't understand what I'm doing, uh, what we're trying to do here, uh, is, so I want to take my expression tree and get it, at, uh, represented as a, tr as a string. So essentially, what um, if if I do a uh, where is it? Um, a good example of this would be right here. I have this expression tree right here that is this value. Now, what I want to get as my string, uh, actually, which one did I test? I did command word policy, yeah. So essentially, what I want to get back is something that looks like this. Um, except that I want my word to be foo. So I want to get this as part of the string and coming right after, like, command word. So I want it to be kind of like this. Ish, right? And so that gets me a cache key that's a super powerful cache key. Because I can now say, like, this was the command I used to get this. Now, this isn't perfect. And now the reason I can get away with this is because... So, here's the thing that someone might be realizing. Is that foo and x.command uh, x word 
are the same thing. So these are the same filter, but the reason I don't have to worry about handling both is this. Because I'm using these policies, and this is protected, the only way to do a um, by word is to call this method. And because this method always puts them in that order, because I'm, I'm hiding them behind these uh, methods that, that build them in specific structures that I control, I know the way that they're going to get written. So that's how we're able to get away with this. Okay, so that is what I want to get back, basically. So now this should be a little bit closer to what we're looking for. The test is still going to fail because we haven't rewritten that yet. Um, but I need to look up how to... Um, um, C sharp expression two string expression two string with with constants. Uh, Parsing variable ends up. Uh, hmm. Gonna find this. Gonna find this. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I can do it another way, but I like the I like just using the expression tree because it, it's nice and it handles all cases. But I might not be able to get away with it, and if I can't, then that means I'm just going to put in the cache keys. Uh, the old-fashioned way. So I think I'm gonna put them in the old-fashioned way because I don't see the easy way to do it right now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back to what we were looking for a moment ago. Uh, which means we're gonna look for this. So we want command word Paula. Uh, we want command word uh, by word foo. Uh, yeah, so not quite. Here, look. So that's that's what I'm doing. Right now, uh, so I I'm just on the expression and I call two string and let me show you what it gets me that's really close. So it gets me this, but the problem is, um, what it brings me back is command word equals value of that specification policy blah 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 dot word right, and so the problem is nowhere in that text does it actually say foo and I need it to say foo and so that's the problem I know that font's small I, I apologize I'm not sure I can make that text any bigger um, and since the string does not have the word foo in it I can't use it it doesn't quite get me the expression tree that I want because not only do I want the structure of it but I want it to actually have evaluated the variables and so that's the challenge so if I take a yeah if I pull up what it is right now exactly the that's that's exactly what what the problem is so we're so close we're so close uh, so since I can't do it right now what I'm gonna do is this I am going to comment this one out so we're gonna comment out this cache key and we are well um, yeah actually we're gonna override this cache key um, so that is going to be based on that. So can I make this like virtual or something? Is that even a visual? Visual? Virtual? Okay. I think this is going to work. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make the standard one virtual so that we can override it. Then what we're going to do is we are going to go to the child one, which is the command word policy, right down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in 
uh, essentially uh, the cache key to this. So we're going to make it so the command word policy understands that we might want to pass that in. And actually, do we want to put it on this or do we want to put it on the data item policy? Um, hmm. That's a good question. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we are going to put that in here. So we're going to say... Um, Uh, string cache key. And we're going to make this optional. Now here's what I want to do. We're going to make a backing field for this. So we're going to say private string underscore cache key we're going to um, set underscore cache key equal to the cache key that gets passed in. So if they don't pass one, it's going to stay null, and we're going to use an, we're going to um, create it. Uh, Cobalt, welcome. Hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, and so here's what we're going to do. We're going to say return cache key if we have it. If it's null, instead return back the result of this, which is actually going to be the assignment of the cache key. So we're going to say assign the cache key equal to that value and return it then. Essentially this is doing a lazy load of this value. So if you set a cache key, cool, we're going to use your cache key. If you didn't give us a cache key, we're instead going to make one using this value and this is not going to happen until someone asks for the cache key, which is important because we want to make sure that uh, if something did change the criteria or something, if something happens in one of our lower pieces, we don't do it until the last second. Um, and I'm going to leave it private for now, so it has to get passed in through this constructor. If we later want to change it to protected, we can, and we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so let's hop back to our command word policy where we were using this. And we're now saying that we can make a cache key for this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is this I am gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna use string interpolation to build this because I think it'll be a little bit nicer uh, I think it's bad practice to assign something explicitly in a setter. Oh in a getter. I mean uh, are you talking about uh, this? Doing this this is a lazy loaded uh, uh, assignment AJ Ukraine I think is your name. Uh, it's actually pretty common. Um, that is basically a way of lazy loading that, that value and it's essentially giving me a, a default. It's, uh, it's actually, it's not bad. Cash key. Uh, we're also gonna make that one default to null. And then I'm gonna put this in here. Cash key, there we go. So now we're going to pass in the cache key if we get it, and that'll work fine. So what I want to do is this. Uh, did I, in my test, say that we wanted to use type? We want to use type. So what that means is we are going to uh, pass in... Actually should have been this. So we're going to say type of that and then we're gonna say dot name which actually I meant to say this name of ah uh, so we're gonna do the name of the command word entity then we're gonna say dash and then the next thing that we want to put in is the name of this method so by word so name of by word and then the next thing we're going to do is the value of the word that they passed. So there is our cache key. And that should make, uh, should make that work. Let's go ahead and try out this test now. So we're going to run this here and see what we get. 
Uh, Ineffable Prime, you look good, brother. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I feel pretty good. I've been having a good day. Uh, even on a Monday, you can have a good day sometimes. So we're writing some fun code. We're getting some good stuff done. And our test passes. So awesome. Uh, so what that tells me is that we want to change this name to cash key should. Um, we're going to go ahead and rename the file to match that type. So now the file is updated. Now I want to change this test. So... Um, uh, specify uh, should what do, what do we want to say the cache key should uh, contain relevant data from uh, specification so that's what that one's doing we're going to rerun this with its new name uh, should still pass okay it does fantastic um, do, do, do. So now, to try a different one, we're going to, instead of by word, we're now going to say um, by type. And this one takes in a type. So this is a command by type. So I think this is like the... So command word is actually our aliasing system. So if you take a look, I'm going to type this command in here. This is our aliasing system. It reported back its help text because I didn't use it right. Uh, so it came back and it said, hey, this is how you use our alias command. Uh, so what that means is that this is an alias for an existing type. So I want to do a type of, uh, I want to use a type of expression. And the type I want to check is one of my other ones. So I'm going to do like a coins command. Because our coins command should be able to have an alias set up for it. Uh, so uh, from um, uh, we're going to say given by word specification, and then on this one we're going to say given by type specification. And I typed that wrong. Specification. Thank you for the spell checker there. Uh, ben X A ninety eight. Uh, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. My my hairstyle is not uh, all that fresh. Uh, I think I got my hair cut like a month ago, almost. So I need to. I actually kind of want to get it trimmed again. Uh, it's uh, getting a little bit. Uh, messy but it's not too bad okay so the change I want to make here is by type and then I think I want the name there so I think that is a reasonably good cache key for these ones so it'll give me the type of the object it's caching um, and then what what uh, what type of specification we used and what value we passed in so that seems reasonable to me <coughs> My type coins command. So now when I run this, uh, it's clearly going to fail because I haven't written it yet. So, and yeah, we we don't we don't have a typo. Uh, So, so what's it what's it mean? Hungarian to English. I don't I don't I don't, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. But uh, hopefully it's nothing bad. Uh, let's see. Uh, cache key should be command. It's not, and it came back with. It's going to be using the big. Uh, yeah, so it's using our expression tree trick still, which we don't want it to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to, whoops, not that one. We're going to go to the command word policy. And we're going to pass in the same type of thing here. Oh, it's using full name. Eee. It's right. We should be using full name, not not short name. So I put in the wrong thing. So this test is actually going to, we're going to have to change the 
the value that the test is looking for because it's more accurate than I am here. Okay, whoops. Uh, so, let's bring this down. There is a cool trick that I want to use here because I am realizing that we can get away with something. Uh, and I don't want to use word, I want to use type dot full name. So we're going to use full name there. And uh, that should work. Whoop. Ah. Ah. All right. Yeah. Uh, calm down, there, ineffable prime. Calm down. All right. Anyway. <laughs> well, hopefully it's good. Anyway. Uh, so hopefully everybody's still uh, still having fun here. So here's the cool trick that I want to do. So I've got this code, and I want to be able to generate these uh, cache keys in a nice way. So this is not quite perfect because that's not the full name of the type. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run this code, and we'll see what we get here. So it fails. Let's see if it fails for the right reason. It does because it used the fully qualified namespace here. So we're going to go ahead and put that in here because we do want to actually use the fully qualified namespace. Whoops. Apparently I don't get to copy out of that window. So we're going to do that. And devchatterbot.bot.core.commands.coins command and that one should work, right? But actually that's silly to put that in here, so I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say... We're going to make this a variable. var type to check equals this. So we're going to put that there, and then we're going to say type to check dot full name. And then we're going to do that. So now, yes, I know I'm building a thing inside of my test, but it's fine. Uh, hey, congratulations to the winners. You guys got some coins. Uh, oh, uh, so the reason is because that's just the way I'm getting my default. Uh, it's not super important. Uh, so the lazy load is just to grab a default item. It's not It's not that big a deal, uh, AJ Ukraine. Um, so in, in here, that's basically just a, if you didn't set it, assign one. I could easily do it here also. So I, I could just do this here. Here, hang on. I, I could just put it here just as easily. Um, the only reason why I wouldn't, uh, the, the only reason why I wouldn't is if, is if something decided to change how criteria was set, I don't want to do it until the, la the last second I could. Um, alternately, I could even change it so that we don't even do this assignment. Uh, and so instead of actually saving it in there, I could make it so it generates the new key. Uh, there's a case to be made for either approach there. Uh, so I could see going either way, but um, I don't think it's a huge deal. So, yeah, that's all it is. So, And with everything in programming, there's like multiple ways of doing stuff. So, yeah, don't, don't worry about it. It's uh, <laughs> like... Whatever approach someone wants to take, there's there's a good one uh, in there somewhere for all of them. Uh, really? What did it come back with? Uh, oh, by word. I didn't change this. So that's good. Because that actually gets to the next piece that I was going to do. So this still says by word, but I want this to be by type. And so you'll see that there was a problem there. So what I want to do is this. I want to make a method out of this. 
And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click that key, I'm going to say extract method, and I'm going to say make cache key. Now this might end up going somewhere else, but here's what we're going to do. We have a cache key, so that gets us that thing. Um, we've got that, and then this piece is a string. So I want to take this as a parameter. So we have, wait, we passed in type? What did we pass in type for? Oh, type dot full name, right? String. Uh, what is this? Um, cri uh, criteria. Criteria. Part. We'll call it criteria part. Yeah. Criteria part. So we're gonna grab type dot full name. Put it right there. Okay. So we're gonna make a cache key. And the way we're going to make a cache key is we're going to pass in the type. And now there's some weirdness here. Uh, okay, hang on. Stuff going on in chat. Uh, do you still use the VS17 built-in refactoring capabilities? AJ Ukraine, yes, I do sometimes. Uh, but I also like to use other ones. Um, I usually run ReSharper, although for the past week now I've been running CodeRush because I wanted to give it a try. CodeRush is another tool. Now, CodeRush is less of a refactoring tool and more of like a a code speed optimi optimization tool, hence the name Code Rush. Uh, now, um, I need to get a lot better with it. I'm not very good with it yet, um, and there are some people that are, are much better than I am. Um, uh, and AJ Ukraine, you're so used to... Yeah, so that's part of the challenge I've got. I've been addicted to ReSharper for, uh, what, since like 2007, 2008, and it's basically like what I've used since then, so... Uh, it's it's really tough for me to not use ReSharper. Um, I've I've had that addiction for a long time. Okay, so so uh, so we pass that in. This has got the type, and then the other piece that we want is this. Um, now m my brain's gonna blank for a second because I don't remember how to do this. Whoa! Oh no! Ah! No! 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 I don't know what just happened. We just bombed on something. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I know that could happen. We have bad concurrency. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. I'll bring the bot back. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, my yes, I called Saduki old. And I apologize. Saduki's not that old. She's, you know, uh, I don't know, normal age, regular age, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I broke the bot. He's back. He's back. As the, keep in mind, everybody, this bot is under like active development. I mean, it's in this Visual Studio that it's running. So, like, when we say this is an unstable build, we mean this is an unstable build. So don't mind if they're if they <laughs> if we run into problems. It's gonna happen. All right. So here's the cool thing that I wanted to do. Uh, now I want to make sure that I don't mess this up and look like an idiot on stream. So um, C sharp calling method. Uh, call, uh no calling method. Uh, name attribute. So caller member name attribute is this one, I think is the one that we want. So caller member name. So I am going to say caller member name or something like that. String caller name, something like this if I'm remembering correctly. What does it not like about this? It allows you to obtain the call member name. Okay, has to have a default value. That's fine. And optional parameters have to be last, which means that this has to come at the end. Uh, so what we're going to do is this. We're now going to pass in that. We're going to see what it does. Cross your fingers, everybody. Cross your fingers. Yes, good old fruits is.
All right. So uh, the by type test should work. We're gonna take. We're gonna go ahead and give it a run and see if it passes. So uh, I don't think there's any help text on the heist right now. Okay. So cool. That worked. All right. Hang on. Check this out, guys. Check this out. I think I can make the cache key down here now, passing in Word. And since we've got tests on this, it should actually tell me whether or not I got it right. <clears throat> uh, I think the heist command is in there. Didn't I? Did I? I think I merged it in, didn't I? Maybe I didn't. No, okay, this is, nope, we're not on a heist branch, never mind. Uh, yes, exactly, AJ Ukraine. Code Rush is using, uh, uh, Code Rush is using Roslyn, and that's why, that's one of the reasons why it runs a lot faster. Um, I'm hoping that ReSharper will switch to the same concept, because they can save a lot if they do that also. Um, I would love it if everybody gets all their tools and add-ins running much better. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not on a heist branch. Sorry, everybody. Okay, so these tests are passing, so that tells me that my code works. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but it's really neat stuff. I love that C Sharp can do this. So, uh, you'll notice in my little make cache key method, what I was able to get away with is, uh, <laughs> essentially... I put the caller in here so I know what method you use to create it. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so I want to I want to change this name. I want to call this. So I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it Make Static Helper Cache Key. Uh, so essentially, any of the static helpers I want to be able to use this. Uh, seems JetBrains has a lot of wars with Microsoft nowadays. There is example history with Rider debug mode. Oh, yeah, so um, there's always been that kind of stuff. Uh, companies that make uh, those tools in Microsoft, they there's always been a little bit of shaky ground on those things. Uh, Nuffly, hello, welcome. Enjoy the stream. So the neat thing here is I, you'll notice that all I did was I passed in the word, but I'm able to actually use this caller member name attribute. And what that does is it actually puts by word into this variable and then by type into that variable. So it's a really powerful and cool trick. Uh, so really neat. Yes, yes. The bot is pretty darn awesome. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is we did a name of on this on this type here. Now what I'm wondering is can I pull this up into the next layer? So can I take this and move this up into the base class and get away with it? Nuffly, welcome. Thanks for following. Hopefully you're enjoying the stream. Make static helper cache key. Uh, now I need to include that using statement as well. Yes, welcome, welcome. Yeah, it, 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 is a, it is a nice trick. So now here's what we want to check, is I want to see if I can pull... So I know I can pull part of this up here, but what I want to do, aside from just getting the caller member in here, is I would like to go get the, the generic type in here as well. Uh, K K Zizmi. Uh, you you know Saduki, I take it. Um, and I apologize for butchering your name. I'm sure I did. Okay, so now, uh, and AJ Ukraine. Uh, I take it that means you're enjoying the stream. So welcome. Thank you. Appreciate the follows, everybody. Hopefully that means we'll see you back here tomorrow. Because uh, tomorrow we're going to be streaming uh, at about the same time. And uh, we start at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is about an hour before now. 
So in 23 hours is our next stream, so we'll hopefully see you all there as well. Okay, so here's the trick. I have this in here, which doesn't make sense to have in the data item policy, but I think I might be able to get away with changing it to name of T and hope that it doesn't put in the letter T, which it might. Uh, if it does, we're going to pull that off of the type object. We're going to get the type of T and get the, and get the name of the type. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Okay. So I am going to go run this test again. And that change should recompile, run it, we'll see what we get. Hopefully it all works. Okay, so it pulled T. So see it said T word, which is not what we want, which means we do actually have to do a type of instead of a name of. I thought we might have to do that. So we're gonna use a type of expression on that and then we're gonna say name. Uh, yeah, see AG Ukraine, it was gonna come. I thought it might come back as T, which is fine because we can put this in and this one will work. So it should get us what the actual value of t is at runtime. So now we actually get the t, pull back the right type, and uh, uh, Nuffly, I'll answer that question in a second. Welcome back, uh, arid tag. Um, because name of seems to be compiled. Yeah, so name of is is mostly compile time. It, it's it's compile time. Uh, and uh, there's a steampunk design where keyboards are typer and monitors are <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so Nuffly, uh, right now what we're working on is we are, so we're working on our chatbot. This is a C Sharp and .NET Core chatbot that is actually the one that's in stream that people are talking to. So you can send commands to it and ask it questions and did it crash? Why didn't it respond? What's going on? Bot? He's still alive. Why didn't it respond to pet? Did someone nuke my pet command? No, there it is. How did it miss a command? It's never missed a command before. That's weird. Not from me, at least. Uh, AJ Ukraine. Uh, I have Docker installed on my computer, but this bot's not running under Docker. I actually have Docker disabled on my computer right now because some other virtualization stuff that I'm running uh, and Docker don't get along very nicely, and so I just have my Docker turned off. But yes, I do have it installed on my computer, and we could be using it, and this bot should run under Docker successfully because it is running .NET Core. Uh, okay, so... That means that these tests work and they're actually pretty nice. Let's go ahead and get the last one in the set, which is the command word policy on only primaries. And what we're gonna do for this one is we're also gonna do a make static cache key, static helper cache key. And in this one, we're gonna pass in empty string because there's nothing about that one that's special. Only primaries doesn't do anything, so uh, basically there's no variance in it, so, um, we're going to do that. So we're going to say, uh, given only primaries specification. Uh, so we want only primaries and this is going to be ending on an empty string. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to say only primaries, which means for that one we don't pass in any parameters. So we don't need a type to check either. So we're just going to say policy. And then that's what we want for the cache key. So this one's going to be similar to like the alls that we have, where it's going to be based on type, and that's going to work perfectly. Nuffly, I will answer that question in a second. Um, let, me, let me just go ahead and get this run, and then I will explain our specifications and everything like that because I'm sure some of the people that have arrived late are wondering. Uh, it's actually a very powerful tool that we use in our bot that helps us work with our repositories. And some, a lot of people, I know a lot of people that are against repositories because, you know, blah, 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 you know, I've got so much power in my ORM, why would I hide that away? And, and the answer is, well, as long as you come up with a nice, simple way of giving yourself a lot of power anyway, then it doesn't matter. Um, and in fact, you can still leverage uh, what's in your ORM uh, by using something like a, uh, a specification and policies. So I will show you how that works. Yes, exactly. I know Jimmy. <laughs> I have known Jimmy Bogard for quite a few years now. <laughs> I think I first met him at the MVP Summit. But yeah, um, there, there, there have been some fun conversations about that. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh 
K Kaz Kaziz me and I apologize for butchering your name. I tried to say it earlier and I'm still I'm sure not getting it right. So let me know and I will try to get it right next time. Um, okay. So all these tests are passing. Those cache keys work as we expect them to, which is really freaking cool. Uh, because what that means is they're getting our types. They're pulling like. You guys saw this. Look at how simple that method is. It's just building it based on these values. All I passed in was literally the criteria part. And that's like it. That's the only thing. KZ is me. Ah, so you're KZ. Got it. Yep, I got it. KZ is me. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. There are a lot of people that do like the is me or like call me this and kind of thing. And then you get it. Okay. Uh, your you chat will enjoy Bogard's Twitter and his discussions about repository. He likes using strong words, but yes, yes. Um, Jimmy Bogard has some strong opinions about that. And actually, um, uh, one of the people that uh, I've got, I haven't chosen a date yet for him to be on the stream, um, but uh, someone that was part of one of those discussions recently, uh, Marcus DS, welcome, thanks for following. Hopefully you're enjoying Dev Chatter. Uh, one of the people that was in that discussion, Steve Smith, goes by the name Ardallis on Twitter, is going to be a guest on here, and he's one of the people that was uh, that is on my side of things that you can do repositories right. Um, but I agree, like some repository designs uh, are are total garbage, and uh, they will send you down the wrong path. Um, but that they don't all have to be. Yes, yeah, Saduki, Ardallis. I know. Aren't you impressed? Did you know I knew him? Oh man. Almost like I work with him. Like, we've worked together for years, and we're partners in the same business that we're working on right now. Oh, man. Okay, so here is what I want to do. Um, first off, I want to look over at my cat, who's causing trouble in the room. Uh, but at least he's not trying to climb my legs, so that's a positive. Um, uh, I want to make this all work. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to call a make static helper cache key. Uh, but what I want to do is this. Um, I want to do... I want to do basically the same test we just did in our specifications, but do it for the data... Oh, uh, actually, I just remembered. Someone asked me a question. Uh, yeah, KZ. Uh, Steve does do cool stuff. So the reason why I was joking... Uh, wait, hang on, what is going on? Uh, I will enjoy that talk with Steve. Yes, Steve will be on here, it'll be good. Uh, Saduki, holy cow, you should have shame of all of us who live within a small radius. Yes, Saduki. Well, you do know I thought, I so, okay, so here's here's what Saduki and I are talking about. For anybody that's in, that's wondering what me and, and my moderator are talking about. So, Saduki lives that way, um, just like a few miles that way. Ardellis lives like five miles that way. Um, so, yes, we, we have this, like... We have this little triangle, and then like if we go like a few more miles up that way, there's another one. So basically, there's like a group of like Microsoft MVP insidery type people, regional directors, things like that. So we've got like this small little cadre of people that are all located right here in this small suburb of a small city in Northeast Ohio. So kind of weird uh, that you know it just happens that we're all here, but works pretty well. And yes, actually, Arid Tag, uh, I noticed that and I didn't want to futz with it. But yeah, you'll notice my, my shoulder over here is kind of blending in. So I'm, I'm going a little bit invisible. Uh, and no, uh, Jeff Fritz is actually not that far away. It only takes me six hours to drive there, Janiscu. Uh, yeah, so there you go. See, Saduki's right. Uh, and Steve is a regional director at Microsoft. I'm an ASP insider. I'm a former MVP. They'll, uh, I assume they'll probably give me an MVP award at some point again. We'll see. Um, but developers, 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 developers. Uh, before we jump too much further into this, I do want to show the specifications. I was about to set up the data item policy tests here, which I actually think I am going to create the folder for first. Uh, data item policy tests. But before I get to that, uh, let me copy this over here. Um, let's do that. And then we're gonna say all. Now I need to pick a type for this one. And the type we're gonna do is command word. 
whoops, uh, command word entity, right? So we're going to say command word entity. Let me just put this in here because uh, I want to get this while I'm thinking about it. Uh, and it requires, what? What's it require? Really? I couldn't put it on the other spot? It goes there and not on all? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I forgot I built it that way. Anyway, uh, okay, so Clippers, Clippers, Clippers for Steve Ballmer. Uh, we have a former PowerPoint MVP as well as a SharePoint MVP. Yeah, exactly. We have a lot of them. Uh, once I was using specifications and repositories, but oh, there's too small a value in them. Uh, yeah, so um, the value that I find in them, AJ Ukraine, is that they're not all that useful until you start doing things like caching layers. Uh, and once you start getting into caching layers and, and other things like that, you find some value in them. Uh, but you're right. Uh, you can just use the EF core data context, and it's not as bad as a lot of people will tell you. Um, one of the reasons people started doing uh, that idea of wrapping them is that ORMs used to not have a lot of interfaces, so it was hard to uh, get them out of the way when you wanted to do unit testing, but they have all come a long way and are much better at that. So now that they are better, it is easier. Uh, so... That there data item policy test that contain relevant data uh, should um, do, 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 do. Uh, contain type and all given all specification. My cat is knocking my green screen. Hopefully, it doesn't fall over on me. Didn't so we're gonna call that a win. Oh, thanks, cat. Yep. Yep, just climb on me. I'm, um, you know, don't worry about it. Roar. Roar. All right, everybody. The cat wanted to say hi. This is my cat. His name is Jolie. He is very sweet. Don't you love Jolie? He's a great guy. See, everybody, say hi to Jolie. Yay! Look, he's a kitty. Okay, time to go down. Uh, cat, quit knocking my green screen. Quit it. Uh, yes, Jolie. Uh, it is J Jolie like this. You guys got it. Hang on. He was having a little bit too much fun knocking the green screen around that I don't want it to fall on me. So, yes, Jolie needs his own own stream. <laughs> yeah, so that's my cat. He's nice. Uh, he, he's a lap cat. So, very friendly. So, this is the, the test that we're going for here. And I think we can run this, and it should work. Uh, is it actually like that? I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a, uh, I mean, I can check, but I don't think there's one. What was it really? Whoops. Not sure with that. Should be, uh, all and then X. What? It was X. Why was it X? Hang on. Oh, right, because I didn't pass it in yet. There we go. So now we're going to actually use the cache key. So see, I did it right. Uh, we left it red to begin with. Now we're going to make it green. Uh, yes, integration tests are fan frickin tastic. Uh, but you need to know their integration tests and do them intentionally. Oh, whoops, yep. Nope, this is right. I wrote my test wrong. Test was wrong. Fixed. 
because uh, we don't trim that off the end and there's no reason to. Uh, so I don't see any reason to make it special for the all case. So there we go, our test is passing. So, um, uh, set up simple cache key system. So this is our simple cache keying now that we can use. So if we have a cache key, we want to use it. So what I'm thinking for the cache repository is uh, changing how we do it and essentially making it, if we have a cache key, then it's going to use caching. And if we don't have a cache key, it won't for now. So let's go ahead and change how we do that. So we're going to change up the cache uh, data item policy, cache key. Uh, I am going to get rid of the default for now. Actually, hang on, what's going on in chat? Um, and yes, you do need to... Uh, Larian, welcome, thanks for following. Hopefully you enjoy dev chatter. Uh, what Saduki was mentioning was uh, the integration tests are very good if you have legacy code. In fact, uh, she's so right that, as it turns out, a lot of times integration tests are all you can write on your legacy code. So that's actually why... Uh, long ago, I wrote a lot of integration tests because it was about all we could do in some of our early things to get some tests on there. Uh, and yes, uh, AJ Ukraine is right. When you've got a local database and you can control it, you can do integration tests where you have a controlled state. Whereas if you're talking to, say, an external API, you can't always control the integration test. And so you need to have ones that are a little bit more fail-proof. Hey, wheel spin! Awesome! Hey! Uh, thank you for the, the second month of subscription to the channel. Greatly appreciated. That is awesome. Woohoo! Don't forget to don't forget to dev your hype. Come on, everybody! Everybody that's got dev your hypes in there, you need to get a hype emote. All right. Uh, so. Let's see, Suduki and our own, it's uh, the Microsoft community in Finland, finally figured it out. Uh, Suduki and own integrations, I don't really like the introduction of abstractions. Yeah, so a lot of people are against the repository pattern, which is totally fine. Um, you don't need to use them. Uh, there's a lot of debate over whether or not they add enough value to be worth it, because you do put a layer in the way. Uh, the thing that I like out of them is that you can do things like cached repository and a logging repository and other layers like that that help with things. So, awesome. <laughs> we got all those subs with the hype emotes. So, yay. I'm a big fan of that, that hype emote. For anybody that can't tell, that's a little dinosaur. He's got short arms, so he holds his hype sign with it. He's got little grabbers so that he can hold it up higher because his arms aren't long enough. So, it's quite fun. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we just did that, command word policy, we were going to do that, I'm not going to put that part in yet. Uh, so command words were a great option for that. The next one I want to do is the um, hangman words. So let's go take a look at that specification. So if we jump over to the hangman game, which should be in games, hangman, hangman command, whoops, I meant hangman game. Inside the hangman game, it does the list, and it did it without actually passing in a value. Um, so we didn't pass in a specification, which I'm not totally sure about just yet. Um, what we want to do if you don't pass in a specification, I think what I want to do is change how this works. Um, so... Here's what we're gonna do. So we allow it to, to take in a null, but I kinda wanna change this, so let's go to the implementation of this. And um, inside of here, whoops, not that one. Oh, uh, so I defaulted it, that's a good point. I defaulted it to null, but I'm not sure that's what we wanna do. Um, let's open up the repository again. Uh, so it's got to be a static value. So I don't. So the problem is I don't think I can get away with this. I want to go like data item policy of t and say 
Uh, dot all. So that's what I want to do, but I can't do that because it's null value. See what I mean? So I can't really get away with that. So here's uh, so what we'd have to do is something else. Uh, uh, yeah, so AJ Ukraine, if if your repository already does all that stuff, you can get away with that also. So um, and a lot of them do. So there's there's reason for that. Um, so yes, you can you can get away with that. that. That's why I'm not saying that repositories are the right answer in all situations. Um, so. I, I won't make that case, but I actually like the structure that we've got here, so I don't mind it too much. So here's what I'm thinking. If we come over here and we say cache key specification equals null, then we're attempting to use the spec. So having that default to null is really bad here, um, so we don't want to do this one. Uh, what we want to do is we say um, if spec uh, equals null, then we're going to say uh, spec equals data item policy of type T and dot all. So we're going to put this at the beginning of these, and yes, I'm going to put it in both, even though that's not as nice as I'd like. You have generic repo, so if you... Wait, in this one it requires it. That's weird. Doesn't really. Don't listen to me. Uh... And yes, AJ Ukraine, you are absolutely right. This project is, uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, uh, we are doing a chatbot. It's actually our Twitch chatbot. It's the one that you see that we can talk to in chat. So I did my GitHub command. It responds with that text. You can see it over there on the left. Uh, what AJ Ukraine was suggesting is that this is a learning project, and that is actually very correct. Uh, so anybody that is interested in making your first contribution to an open source project, uh, you are welcome to hop over on our GitHub and send us a pull request. So we actually merged in a couple of pull requests from people today. And um, so if you are interested, you can go here. You can take a look at the issues list and pick something that you think would be good. Uh, and if you want to do that, I'd recommend you filter down your labels by clicking that button that I just did there to get down to good, for, good first issues. And those are some things that um, we thought would be pretty easy for someone to start with. But there are plenty of other ones, and some of them don't... Uh, some of these ones that would be good first issues, uh, some some are and they aren't labeled as such. So don't let that discourage you. If it doesn't say it's a good first issue and it sounds interesting to you, you can still work on it. And if you want to otherwise contribute to the project, you can add new issues and things like that by clicking the new issue button and typing in what you want. Whether it's a feature request or a bug you noticed, anything that you think would be cool that you want to add to the project, you are welcome to contribute. Uh, so in whatever form that is. And so yes, this is all about a learning thing. It's learning, it's fun, you know, like... We're, we're writing code because we want to write code and we want to stay up to date on all of the different tech that we're using and we want to make sure that things are good and this is how we want to do it. Uh, so, that's the idea. And if you are interested in chatting with all the other people that are in here, because there are a lot of us and many of us do talk outside the stream, you can also check out our, GitHub, or the, our Discord, which I linked over there. Uh, so it's in the chat as well. Uh, so if you are interested in chatting more with other people from Dev Chatter, you can go there and check it out. Uh, a lot of the people that do uh, pull requests to the project are in our Discord and talk about their pull requests before they send them in. So if you want to talk to more devs about that stuff, you're welcome to hop over there. And uh, our Discord also uh, has sections for chatting about different technologies. So if you're a JavaScript dev and the c -sharp stuff's interesting, you can talk to us about c -sharp, or you can hop over into the JavaScript rooms and talk to people about JavaScript. Uh, or, you know, we've got other tech as well. So... Whatever you're interested in, you can take a look. Okay, so uh, jumping back to this code, so I'm going to force it to use that data item policy. And actually, now that I think about it, someone had asked how these specifications work. Uh, so I will show that really quickly before we move on. 
So let's go into our project specifications. And if we take a look at our I specification, uh, bot infra discord, uh, Janiscu. Uh, yeah, there is a pull request to add discord, uh, but I have not add. So our bot is eventually, we're going to connect it to discord eventually, but I haven't yet. Um, and one of the pull requests is, uh, to add discord connection, which I haven't done yet. And I really need to get to that one soon. Uh, so, the person who asked about this, I forget who it was, someone asked about how these worked. Uh, so I'm going to explain our specifications really quickly. Um, and I think it was uh, Nuffly that asked about it. So hopefully I get the answer that you were looking for here, Nuffly. Uh, you actually asked what the command word policy is, but I'm going to explain it by explaining what the I specification is since it implements that. Uh, wait, what? Crimson green, what? I'm confused. Why, why did you ban people? I will ask crimson green about that in a minute. Anyway, uh, I guess I shouldn't say which mods banned people, um, on stream because that's not very smart of me. Anyway, so this is the relevant piece about what an I specification is. Um, it is an expression of function of t, which is a simple way of saying that we want to be able to write a lambda expression that could evaluate in both uh, an EF data context or it can evaluate against an in-memory collection. So essentially this is just a filter. So given a t, respond back with a true or false of whether or not it should be included in the set. So examples of this can be found in the command word policy. So this is my expression, essentially saying you know, given a command word, check and see that that command word's full type name matches the type name given here. Uh, another example is this one. Checking this, check that the command word matches the word specified. So that's basically how these pieces work, and it's pretty simple. So it makes things uh, easy to work with. So I can get away with writing, uh, let's pull it up. So when I want to access the repository, I can say repository list and say command word policy by type get type, right? And then that will get me all of the uh, aliases, so all the command words that will call this command. So that's the way that it works. Pretty simple. Oh, uh, thank you, Crimson Green, for removing that. Uh, AJ Ukraine. Also, I'll add there is a beautiful language called Lisp, which is complete. <laughs> you know, AJ Ukraine, you kid. But I actually do like Lisp and and other similar languages. Um. So uh, I've, I've done some interesting stuff with them. I haven't touched them in a long time, but there are a lot of really great programming languages out there, so I don't, I don't like being critical of them. I might be a dev that writes things in C-sharp, but that doesn't mean C-sharp is the best language ever. So I think you can always find the right language for the right task, and that's where you are best off. Um... So, um, force the all policy uh, when none specified. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, World Wake. Uh, I think he misclicked something, I don't know. Either way, here, have, have 100 extra tokens as a consolation. Uh, it's not a critical note. Uh, I mean, for the one who's curious about specification, you can have checks and texture here. There's a language built around that idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, uh, you accidentally got the ban hammer there, World Wake. That's what happened. Uh, but you've been unbanned now, so... Yeah, see? <laughs> the accidental ban on Twitch. Uh, I enjoy reading one of those. But like... Yeah, exactly. Uh, what Saduki says is totally right. There is no right answer. 
So uh, there are great languages, great uh, there are great frameworks. Uh, there are a lot of good reasons to write all kinds of different code. So don't let anybody tell you that the type of code you're trying to write isn't the right stuff. There are so many, uh, <laughs> so many things there. Uh, and uh, Nuffly, I do have Writer installed on my computer, and I have tried it. Uh, is the short answer. Um, we haven't used it for this yet, um, but that doesn't mean that we won't. Okay, so, uh, where was I? So we were writing that, and I want to make it so that, uh, so we're now using the all data item policy. So what I just changed is this. I just made it so that if you don't mention which uh, specification you want to use, we're going to use the all one, which basically means we're going to apply a where true statement, so it's going to be an, essentially a no-op, uh, and then we're going to put in a special cache key for that. So what this means is that now when we use the um, when we use the hangman word policy, the hangman word should now be able to use a uh, data item policy from with an all on it, which means it's going to get a cache key. So it should be able to now cache all of those once we start using this cache repository, which we're not using yet. We haven't wired it up to actually be used. Uh, okay. Uh, channeled my inner Hulk. Uh, accidental display of power, shock, and awe in Twitch chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, ac accidental. Uh, I'm working on Entity Framework in Zoom. Listening to some nerds with glasses. I kid. Yes, yes. I, I am some nerd with glasses. I don't... I don't, I don't what? What do you think? You think I don't? You think I dislike the term nerd? No, I'm a nerd. That's great. Proud of it, man. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, nerds are awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and Saduki's right. We ban everybody that uses Entity Framework here. I'm using EF Core, not Entity Framework. Totally different thing. Okay. Uh, so we got that. We got that. Uh, we're adding in the caching layer for that piece. So now when I want to wire this up. I actually don't know how to wire this up. There's there's a little bit of magic. Um, ladies and gentlemen, nerds are awesome. Saduki, do you know how to use the help, the, the quote command? It, there's the instructions, Saduki. In case you wanted to quote that. Okay. Uh... Cache repository set up like that. So I don't know in Autofac how to make this one work. Um, I will need to look it up. So there's a little bit of magic that needs to happen. And uh, let's see, Arnalis cache repository um, structure map. I'm going to bring this up so I can show you guys what I am talking about. Uh, so, hey look, I pulled up Steve Smith's blog, so for anybody that knows our Dallas, I pulled up his blog. Why did I pull up his blog? Because I know he did a write-up of the thing that we do before. So, um, when, uh, so for a structure map, uh, this is his example. This is the magic that needs to happen in order to make this work. Basically, we're going to do the same kind of thing. We want to say, when, when, our, when our repository is requested, we want to use our cached repository. And then in the constructor of the cached repository, it's going to ask for another repository. And we want to give it the EF repository. And so that's the, the basic way that we want to do this. But we want to do this for autofac, not structure map. So this is how you do it in structure map. So let's take a look and see if we can't figure out how we're supposed to do that in the other one. Uh, so... Um, how did it set up? Um, this one might be configured in here. For iRepository, add it as a single instance. Okay. Um, so, register repository set up repository ah okay got it so 
this was returning back a repository is how we had this work. So since we had to create one in here, we just newed it up and didn't do this. So uh, in that case, we could just new up our new one here and we could just new up a new cache repository. Um, except our cache repository isn't ready, so I don't really want to turn this on. Uh, so, uh, and I will catch up on chat in just a second, everybody. So if you did say a bunch of things, um, that I will be there in a second to read that. Uh, we're going to say cache repository. We're going to pass in that one right there. So I apologize for not getting to chat just yet. Give me one second to finish the code I'm writing. Just want to keep things in my head. Oh, and I need my cache layer, sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, come on. Put someone down. Alright, I'm reading chat. Uh, okay, so what do we got? Uh, we need to, you're working on a cryptocurrency in C Sharp. Who said C Sharp can't do everything? C Sharp can do everything. Uh, Saduki added a quote. Uh, actually, no one says this is a general purpose language. Uh, I hate ORMs equally. Yes, exactly. Uh, not really a fan of ORMs, but I think that's the DBA in me. Um, and uh, Saduki, what's your opinion of micro ORMs? Because um, I like micro ORMs. Dev Chatter, is solo learn a good website to start learning how to code um i don't know the site uh, but there are a lot of great sites to learn how to code uh so if you are starting off at the beginning um there are a lot of places and i would recommend that uh so it really depends um how how are your like have you done any programming before are you familiar with like the the, the logic of how that works that would be the first question i'd ask before i decided where to direct you um, it depends, always applies, ORM queries are often quite limited, so you can't either, yeah, that's the problem with a lot of ORMs, is they, they make poor queries a lot of times, uh, but they also get rid of a lot of plumbing code that you'd otherwise be stuck writing, uh, kind of great for your commands and system, if you use DDD, for example, yep, uh, if Brendan wants to show some ORM stuff, we should get, we should try to get Julie Lerman to come on and talk about any framework. Uh, yes, um, and, and Saduki, did you know that, uh, Julie Lerman's actually been in town here before? Uh, she's, she's come out and spoken at our user group before, too, so, uh, local one to us. Uh, yeah, it can't do everything, Brave, Brave Cobra's correct, but it does a lot. Uh, micro RMs like Dapper, yes, exactly like Dapper, Saduki, that's what I was talking about. Uh, yes. So I, I like Dapper. I've used it in a number of projects. I'm a big fan of it. I like micro ORMs because they do some of the like, you know, switch me between SQL and objects really nicely, uh, but they still let me control the SQL that's actually run. So that's why I like uh, micro ORMs. Um, so uh, Pavlovich, Nikolai, uh, I have not tried Kotlin. Um, but I know a bunch of people that have and swear by it. Um, it's something I want to look at at some point. So I don't have a, I don't have an opinion on it right now, though. Um, uh, Saduki, I am sure you helped coordinate the visit to Akron. Um, you'll never guess who, coor who coordinated her visit when she stopped by Hudson SC one time. And the answer is Steve, not me. Uh, and uh, yes, so I'm a big fan of micro ORMs. Um, ORMs can also be good, but uh, they're a lot of times big and do a lot of stuff, so it really comes down to things. Uh, oh, KZ is me. Uh, do I attend Hudson SC? Oh, that's funny. KZ, you must be from around here. That's hilarious. Um... Yeah, so, Casey, uh, so, uh, it's funny, whispered me a question that I am actually going to answer, um, and yes, Saduki, you're right. Um, so, Hudson SC is a local, uh, we'll call it a meetup group, it's a user group that meets in my local area. Um, I am actually one of, like, two founders of that group, but I actually haven't made it many times in the past six months. I've made it once in the past six months. I have a five-month-old, and that's actually why I haven't been making it to those meetings. Uh, but I will be attending more of those soon. So if anybody is actually in my area, um, I do attend a local software craftsmanship user group. 
Um, so it's quite fun. And uh, anyway, so where we were was this. We were going to make our new uh, in memory cache layer right there. And then that should make everything work. And so now we should be using the cache repository and everything should be set up. So uh, I want to call this uh, actually use the cached repository. Uh, so we're just inside a caching branch, so I don't have to worry about the fact that this doesn't work yet because this doesn't work yet because all we're doing is caching and we're not actually expiring the cache items or anything like that. So it's a, sh it's a garbage cache right now. We don't really want to use that. Uh, Twitch Loft. Yes, I said craftsmanship. Because thank you, English is not very good at having a neutral word there. Man in this case means like human, not man as in male. Craftspersonmanship. I, I don't Craftspersonship? I can, I can try that. It, uh, okay, anyway, uh, da, 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 da. so, uh, yeah, I can, uh, I can talk with you guys, um, about Hudson SC stuff at some point, if you like, and anything like that, uh, database access versus bad design, uh, bonus, which, uh, Saduki's trying to, yeah, trying to give out negatives, uh, yes, yes, I did, my, you guys are being jerks here for a while, Uh, async awake, I don't think he actually can. Uh, okay, so I have just committed our stuff back into our caching branch. And, um, uh, that brings me to this. Uh, I want to mention the uptime. So we've been going for about two and a half hours, which is a slightly longer than normal stream. We started a bit early today. We started at one o'clock instead of two o'clock, which is our normal Monday time. Uh, so our, uh, I want to start doing our wrap up here. So I want to thank everybody for showing up and talking today. Uh, I do need to duck out a little bit early. That's why I started early. And um, uh, I will catch up with you what you guys are saying in chat in a second. Uh, I am uh, really glad all you guys were here. Uh, Swifty Spiffy, perfect timing. I'm actually on my way out, so sorry about that. I want to thank everybody for following today. We had a bunch of you. Uh, and then I also wanted to thank Pritchett Bots and, for uh, the Twitch Prime uh, subscription. So thank you. Enjoy the uh, hype emote, the dev chatter hype emote. It is an awesome little dev to dev to hype emote for anybody that doesn't know. And Wheel Spin, thank you for the resub. Uh, that's two months in a row now, so thank you again. And um, I wanted to make sure that everybody knows that uh, you can actually find all of the code that we use, all the code we do on stream, everything we type is out on GitHub, github.com slash dev chatter. Uh, so you can find it out here. You'll see all of our projects that we work on. The one we did today was the Dev Chatter Bot, which you'll see right here. So you can go take a look at that. Twitch Loft, thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. So uh, as always, you are awesome and greatly appreciated. Uh, and uh, what was I going to mention? I was going to say that uh, a lot of us actually continue talking outside of the stream. So if you want to talk to other people that are interested in code and talk about code with them, our other Dev Chatters, uh, the chatter continues over on Discord afterwards. Discord is a chat program that is commonly used among gamers, but it's also used for a lot of Twitch streams. And uh, Meister Hartvig, uh, I apologize for butchering your name. Hopefully I got it kind of close, but thank you for following. Uh, so if people do want to keep chatting, you can do that over on Discord. And uh, anyway, uh, I want to mention our usual schedule, which you can find down below. If you are in, uh, if you're on Twitch, you can find it down below, right down here. There's this nice little section here that says now it says we're live right now, but it will tell you in your time zone. So this is mine when the streams happen. So if you scroll down to that, you should be able to find this, and it will tell you when the next streams are. We stream on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and it should put it in your own time zone. Uh, but if you know what your uh, time zone offset is, for example, I am uh, UTC minus four, I can use our schedule command that we programmed into our bot and it will give me uh, our schedule in my time zone, which is also useful. And if you want to uh, take a look at uh, 
Anything that we've got coming up, you can also find that over on our stream info section, where if I do plan out what we're going to do for that day, you'll find a link and some information about what we're going to be doing. And hopefully, I will catch all of you tomorrow. Uh, so our next stream is about 22 hours from now, so set your clocks. Uh, that's our countdown. 22 hours, everybody. And we will be live. We are going to write some more um, of our chatbot stuff. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get some pair programming going on tomorrow. Uh, I've got a couple of people that said that uh, they wanted to do someday this week they wanted a pair program, but if neither one of those guys responds, uh, then I will try and convince Saduki, who is, you know, of course, in here and probably still listening. Uh, so I'm going to try to get them first because they said specifically that they wanted to. Uh, they said specifically that they wanted to be on this week. Uh, as a pair programmer, so uh, we'll see if we can get them on there. Uh, but we here love Saduki. She's awesome. She's a very good developer, and uh, would always pair program with her if she'll if she'll work with us. Uh, anyway, I think that's uh, probably a good wrap up for the day. I think I thanked everybody uh, that showed up and everything. Oh, I want to thank C Sharp Fritz for the uh, auto host. So. If anybody else is interested in more uh, C-Sharp, .NET Core, ASP.NET goodness, uh, C-Sharp Fritz is another channel you should check out on Twitch, so go ahead and give C-Sharp Fritz a follow. Uh, we like him a lot because he gives us an auto-host, and any channel that gives us an auto-host is awesome in my book. Uh, we actually also auto-host him. Uh, so if you're ever checking around... Um, Occasionally, Dev Chatter's not live, but we will be hosting someone else. So if you show up to the Dev Chatter, you, Dev Chatter URL, you will actually get to see other streams. So, yes, Swifty Spiffy. Uh, yeah, so C Sharp Fritz is a great guy. I actually worked with him at a previous company, and I've uh, known him for quite a few years. Very good guy. And, um, anyway, I think that's about it for today. So... Everyone enjoy the rest of your Monday, however much you've got left, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or whether you're, say, in like Australia or something, and it maybe is already Tuesday. But either way, uh, <laughs> I hope you all are having a great day, and uh, we will catch you all tomorrow. So thanks, and have a good one.